I wish I could do... Can you do construction contracts? Do they ever send you to Menaphos? Unplayable. I can't, I can't get past this. See, look at the outside. Look at these decorations. This is magnificent. Perfectly symmetrical. The doors are symmetrical. These hanging banners are regal, symmetrical, looking great. Although these aren't mirror images. These are... Uh, the danglies need to be mirrored. But regardless, the inside is just... All I can hope is that once the scaffolding is removed and the renovations are done, we'll be in good shape. And can I just, while we're on the topic, and I'm sorry, um, this scaffolding looks like it was built by uh, the creator of the game, Mousetrap. It's kind of like a Rube Goldberg machine. Um So they're all about embalming and burial rites. I'm fine with asymmetrical, sort of, but not when some of it's symmetrical and some of it's not. But here's the deal. Do you see this ladder right here at the bottom of the scaffolding? Is anyone aware of this? This ladder is about three feet tall. And then it goes to a cross section here. And then there is about a 12 foot ladder. Why? 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 Just why? And then here's the deal <laughs> this is the coup de grace. Do you see this part of the scaffolding? This is like a ramp. So you can get your unicycle and you can be on here and you just ride off and you go off this ramp and you crash to your death right here. And you're in the right place then. If they worship the god of death, maybe this ramp is so you can just launch yourself on your unicycle or skateboard off of this ramp to your death and they can bury you right away. They've got the urns. They've got, you know... The processing, I mean, this right here looks like where they just lay your body. Um, <laughs> I would love that, Rosie Posey. Hasbro could make this game. I mean, it's the most random hodgepodge of construction. Then look at this. Okay, it's like actually it's exponential growth. Look at this ladder size and then look at this medium ladder size right here. And then look at this bad boy ladder right here. And then, oh, look at the next ladder. Holy smokes. This ladder just goes off into oblivion. Yeah, that's actually, I think I figured it out. It's, they're doubling. This ladder is like, you square this, you get this ladder. You square this, and you get this ladder. And then you square this ladder, and you get this ladder. That's the... They're going for, like, some kind of amazing golden ratio thing. Now, I don't get either. These two beams are, you know, when you're doing construction, you try to get the beams that are straight. These are crooked and not straight and are tied together in a very loose fashion. I'm not going to climb it, Morbent Fell. Oh, you go all the way up to the top. Cool. So you climb it and you make it all the way out instantly. Well, maybe they have a secret. The view up here is spectacular, by the way. This scaffolding on the outside is a masterpiece. Although this looks a little bit like haberdash, like, you know, some hodgepodge. But, um... Yeah, look at the water on the sheen. See, this is what I'm talking about. And for all of the disrepair on the inside, the roof is in amazing condition. I'd eat off of this roof. It looks great. 
All right, I'm going down. Yes, it is the Fibonacci thing, right? It's like a mathematical proof. I just think this might be the funniest structure I've seen in RuneScape, this scaffolding. And then look at these massive support beams right here. These look like load-bearing, ginormous support beams, and yet they don't go all the way to the ground. They go to this three-foot scaffolding. <laughs> They're like, oh, well, we don't have enough for these beams. Raise it up. Oh, man. I love it. Okay, let's talk to the priest. Uh, enough of that. Enough of that. I could go on for days about this. This is an amazing space. Hello? I will have no dealings with those who plunder the houses of the dead. But while you're here, could you help me straighten the rug that's kind of trapped underneath the altar? Oh, and yes, I realize I have a rug-on-top-of-rug scheme going. Wait, the Sphinx told me I should talk to you. The Sphinx? Is it possible that contrary old cat has never done anything to help us? Prove it. You hand the statue to the high priest. Hmm, so what do you want then? Well, there's this jar that's come into my possession. What, a burial jar? Oh my gosh, it's my favorite. It's the RuneScape I'm shocked expression. Oh my god. I mean, this guy's the high priest. Like, you'd think he's seen a burial jar before. He has absolutely soiled his robes. I guess so. Oh, no. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Um, yes, I have it. Um, what? Um, what, what? What is wrong with you? Uh, sorry. I'm still well, you know. What? Come on, spit it out. Dude. And that's not enough time, Nick, man. I, I'm telling you, I could do an hour on this place. I could break this down piece by piece. There, There's a lot to say about the design choice in this space. Because here's the thing that you always have to remember. It was necessary, Rosie Posey. Whenever you're playing a video game and you're looking at the interior space... Somebody had to intentionally place every object in here. And I'm just thinking, why? Why did you make these choices? What were you doing? What were you trying to create? What was the purpose? You know, and so I like to just think about the fact that somebody at some point manually put these objects in here and try to speculate why they did what they did. Okay. It. Oh, this is why he's all shocked about the burial char, because it's his first day. He's like, uh, <laughs> I just got promoted, and uh, I've ever never actually done a burial, if you know what I mean. Yeah, they're not lined up. It is a little odd, right, with the torches? What do you mean, new? It's my first week on the job, and I already I've had an outbreak of plagues. Half the population has fled the town, and to top it off, some adventurer has desecrated the tomb of the old high priest. Oh, boy. Hey, my bank is my business, right? This is a public space. This is meant for worshippers. They come in... They see this. They're not the same when they leave. My bank may be punishing, but that's between me and my banker. Aaliyah, good evening. 
spoiler, the high priest gets demoted to the low priest. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Like, this guy's, like, all freaking out, uh, you know, as if it's his first day on the job, and he doesn't know what to do. Hey, nice guy. Good evening, my friend. How you doing? But it's like there had to have been some vetting process, right? Like, he served under the previous high priest, or he was, like, a low priest at some point and did clerical work to get up to this. It's not like they just pulled in some dude off the street to be the high priest, right? All right. Yeah, that was probably me. You did? Yeah, I I did this. No, I mean, the the Pringle guy religion is really, really... It's like a Pringle guy mustache with a clown nose in the middle. And I'm kind of behind that. And I get that um, this is a, you know, burial jar right here, perhaps. Hey, Dragon Zade, what is up, my friend? How's it going? Good to see you. Thanks for the raid. I get that. That this is looks kind of like a martini shaker. You did? Yes. Do you think I should return to Jar then? <gasps> Would a burial jar blow my mind? I mean, not really. Now, granted, a burial jar doesn't blow my mind. If we're talking about, like, an urn with ashes in it, that's not so surprising. Um, but a, a decaying organ inside the jar, that's that's just, that would trouble me. I do have to admit. I can concede that point. Hey, Rosie Posey. Yes, exactly. So what I do is I just run in and I throw my stuff at the banker randomly and the banker just has, you know, no recourse but to just put them in a giant box. Um, it's kind of like a bag of holding or, you know, like in Harry Potter when Hermione has uh, cast the extending charm on the bag where she puts an entire library of books and other things and has to, like, reach down in it and rummage around for random stuff. That's my bank. It's Hermione's bag. Um, gnomes have the martini shakers. Oh, they do. That's right. They have all those frou-frou drinks, brew. Yes, that's, that's it, Sir Theodore. I'm Dr. Incompetent, and he's Pope Incompetent. He's like, I actually... Look, they gave me these fancy robes and this staff, and it's all very well-to-do, but... I don't know what I'm doing. Please help me. I like that this guy's at least take a picture of the big mustache. I should. And it's like, yeah, it's on you, Morbid Fell. I can see it. You're wearing it. You are Mario. I can sympathize with this dude. I like that he's cutting, you know, straight talking me. Uh, yes, that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? So, do you have any tips about the pyramid, seeing as it was probably your priest who built it? Uh, you could try to avoid the traps. Oh, no, not more traps. Not more traps. Any other useful advice to go with that? Oh, yes, how could I forget? The key to getting into the pyramid is to have a cat. Have a cat. Didn't the Sphinx tell you that cats act as guardians against the devourer? She may have. So, it stands to reason that only they should be able to open the pyramid door. Ask your cat for help when you intend to enter. Um, I see. Ask my cat, you said. Anyway, I had better return this jar. Oh, cool, Nick, man. I do like to work with the gnomes. To enter the pyramid, I need a cat. I suppose the hieroglyph of the cat on the door might have been a hint. But correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't I already enter the pyramid? Didn't I do that? Like, why am I... Why are they telling me now that I need a cat to get into the place? Oh, because I... He took my cat. Oh, no, I have my cat. I don't understand. Okay. 
um, examined the carpet, was once complicit in a rug-related crime. Oh, my goodness. It looks like that. Yes, Rosie Posey. I have the highest quality stuff. It's just a giant cardboard container of rug-related crime. Oh, it was a flashback. Okay. But I wasn't protected from the devourer because I didn't have this cat? All right. But I had the cat, right? Let's talk to Nelly. What's up, Nelly? Meow. All right, I'm a little confused. Let's do this. Let's get in this pyramid then. Good day. The Sphinx ignores you. Um, there's the cat. Bibbidi blabbidi. I triggered a flashback of what I was doing before I woke up with a headache. Wait a minute. Okay, Episca Cat, so you guys are going to have to help me with this. I triggered a flashback of something I did in the past, or I triggered a vision of what I'm about to do now in the present. Was I, like, in the body of the high priest or something when I was in there before? Anyway, um... Examine the jar? I will. I need help. How go things, great guardian of cats? I don't care for your mocking tone. I have helped you enough, or as at least as much as I'm willing to. Come on, cat. Let's leave that nasty sphinx alone. Yeah, I love that passive-aggressive talk about the sphinx like he's not there right to his face. Take that. Oh, okay. Interesting. Was it my memory? Has a lid shaped like a bug. Disgusting. I think there's a stomach inside. I did, right. Oh, so it was a memory of how I got the jar in the first place, a Pisca Cat? Oh, okay. So when I clicked on it, it was just replaying the memory of me in the past taking the jar. I have to tell you guys that it, that's one of the tricky things in terms of the Ludo narrative of the game where it's it's confusing when I'm, you know, because Playing RuneScape, I'm in control of the character. I click, and the character goes places. I interact with things, and the character goes places. So, because I'm controlling myself in a memory I had that I don't remember myself doing, it's very, very confusing in terms of how this is functioning. You know what I mean? Like, if I saw a vision of myself doing something in the past, but I wasn't playing as the character, it would make more intuitive sense that I was witnessing a flashback than if I were actively making choices within a memory that I'd been forgotten. I, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just a little bit awkward to play that part out in the game for me. But anyway... Okay. Oh, uh, drop. Uh, no, not drop. Why is my cat put away? <laughs> the cat sound is a, is kind of rough. It's funny how it just keeps going. Um, pets. Follower pets. Companion pets. Um...
<laughs> Kylug. I did it, but the Devourer was in control. And see, that's the thing, Brew, because the Devourer was in control of me while I was hypnotized, but when I triggered the memory, I'm going through the puzzles myself without knowledge of them, but the Devourer probably understands the interior layout of the pyramid and would control me correctly. Just, it's just weird. Um, drop it? Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't want to just get rid of it forever. Oh no, it's still not letting me in. Um, am I going to the wrong place? Interact with the cat. Um, talk to the cat. Any news? Purr. Alright, um... Oh, you have to right-click and say open. Left-click is just touching it. Right-click open is the right way to do this. Hey, puss, what do you reckon about the cat on the door? Do you think you can open it? Meow. The door of the temple opens and you step through. Yeah, see, it's confusing because I didn't have to do that interaction before. I just left-clicked on it and got inside. Okay. Anyway, here we are, back in this place. All right. Luckily, I remember this. Now, what we're praying, people... Oh, you feel dirty, Brew? Because you did a cash? Oh, it's okay. I won't tell anyone. Here's what I have to remember. Alright? It's very, very simple. It is... Do not... Under any circumstance. Okay, here we go. Open the puzzle. Please don't make me open the puzzle. That's what I'm hoping for. Because it's going to slow down the stream. If I have to do it again, I apologize. It'll slow it down. I, I'll do it as fast as possible. Oh, Episca Cat, that does make sense. Thank you for explaining that. Um, so before, I was just touching the door, and that triggered the memory. I get it. And I wasn't actually opening it. I was just remembering when I opened it in the past under control of the Devourer, who is the Wanderer who hypnotized me in the desert. It makes sense. It does. I do have to do the puzzle again. All right. Can you guys think of a, a good reason why they would make you do this all again? Except to just punish you as a person? <laughs> It makes sense. It makes sense. I'm being unfair. All right. Please, here's hoping we don't miss the jump. I need to get a burial jar to the mistress. Uh-oh, something has changed here. You find yourself back in a dreamlike state. What is this unholy symbol? Sign of the Devourer. It's funny. I like doing... You know, you're right, Sir Theodore. Probably not. But I do like doing quests like this. First of all, just to experience the full gamut. And I love when I'm about to do a quest and everybody in chat is just like, oh my god, I'm having P like you know PTSD flashbacks of this quest. That's when I know I'm getting into a good one. I like 
by the way, that the unholy symbol is just an onk that's been flipped upside down. If I turn this, if I flip this over, does it become less unholy? It's a good question. All right. So I've been lucky on the pit. I must get the stomach burial jar for the mistress. Now, wait a minute. I lost the jar?